Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Elevation Podcast. My name is Sean Riffraff. I am, you know, I'm here. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm excited about tonight. This is actually the tenth episode of Elevation Podcast, and um, I can't, I can't, um, I can't tell you enough how, how, how quickly this whole thing has like come together, and how, how great it's happening, and how many people are excited about it, and just happy. I'm just happy that in the direction that God's moving me. Um, today, I was. Today I was I was interestingly enough I was reading, of course, um, all, on my timeline, and um, and every other time every other post was about Kobe Bryant, and you know, anyone who knows me any for longer than a day knows that I'm not much of a sports fan. Um, I don't you know I just just I didn't get that bug as a child, um, but you know. What I do see a lot is, you know, I always I can always notice when other people are hurting, um, and and what has really affected other people. But what I also notice, and what what <laughs> what I also notice about people, is that it's always it's never a lack of someone to turn something, to take something that's happening in the world and turn it into some type of divisive subject. And you know, while I'm watching. While I'm watching, um, you know, everyone, you know, sort of pour out their hearts on, on, on the timeline, there's always someone that says something stupid, like, y'all worry about Kobe Bryant, y'all need to get your life right with Jesus, and or, or something negative, or I wonder if God had a purpose for, and it's like, I don't, and then sometimes people are just negative, and sometimes you actually think that that method of 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 relating to people actually works, and um, and I just want to share something. Um, I, I want to share something. Proverbs six and sixteen um, it talks about um, seven different abominations. Um, in this part, Proverbs Proverbs seven there's different abominations in different places, but Proverbs sixteen specifically talks about seven different abominations. And the, the, the final one, the seventh of the seven, um, is the sower of discourse. The, purpose, the, the, the person who purposely goes and says something negative to get everybody riled up. Um, in Proverbs, it calls that an abomination. You being a, a troll just to get people unhappy in a moment where people are really, really hurting, having no sensitivity, no empathy for people that are actually hurting does not make, you are not doing ministry because you're using a method in which God hates. I just had to get that out. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's, it's bugging me. I'm not a big. I'm not a big sports fan. Kobe wasn't, you know, wasn't really impactful in my life in particular. But when I watch other people hurting, I all it's 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 you know you always have some sort of empathy towards people. You want to pray for people. You want to say, hey, listen, you know, I may not relate to you like that, but you know, I'm here for you if you want to, you know, if you want to would want to talk about it or, you know, watch Kobe videos all night, whatever you want to do, you know. Um, try something else, people. <laughs> Try something else. This is the Elevation Podcast. My name is Sean Riff Rev. Let's get this thing started. Welcome to the Elevation Podcast. My name is Sean Riffraff, and I'm excited. I am here um, with none other than uh, Bishop Eric Zimmerman. What's up, man? I can't call it, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, you know what I'm saying? By the grace of God, I'm here. Man, um, I just want y'all to know that under this table, he has a, he has a, a boot on his foot. Yeah. Um, and since we're talking about Kobe Bryant anyway... Um, you want to tell the people how you how you got this uh, this uh, this boot on my leg? Yeah, because I'm a Kobe fan. <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, this this is what happened, right? So I got on this big workout thing. You know, I'm about to be 55 in February, so I was like, let me get my weight down, let me get in shape and everything. And uh, 
So I was at the gym. My personal trainer gave me a good workout. It was a real good workout. From that workout, I should have went home. Matter of fact, I believe it was the Lord said go home. I didn't go home. I went to the basketball court and just started shooting around, which I do sometimes just to, you know, make sure I still my, my jump is still wet. Right. And so what happened was these guys baited me in the plan. I usually say no because I've been working out since September. So I'm usually like, no, I can't play. I'm good. This time, I told the guy no. He says, come, what on, come on, man. It's just, um, you know, just a, a couple of because it was only three of us. And I was like, nah, I, I don't need to do that. I'm good. And so I said, I can't really do anything. You know, I can't really play hard. He said, none of us are going to play hard. I said, okay. So I went up there, shooting around, game of 21. Ball bounces off the rim. I go to get it. This guy kicks me in my Achilles. Mm. He had like size 12s. <laughs> he was like six something, maybe 200 something pounds. Wow. Kicks me in my Achilles. I went down for the count. I was like, this is not happening. This is not my life. So when it got evaluated, and this is where I am. Oh, man. Eight weeks, man. That's a process. Yeah. It is definitely a process. <laughs> I was watching you on your, uh, you know, you live stream your your um, Bible study, um, and I one thing I can always have admired about you is your ability to laugh at yourself. Got no choice. <laughs> <laughs> like one thing I've always like you you have this amazing ability just to laugh at yourself when something you know, and like, I think life is like life is like a lot a lot. You know, you can take, you know, when you don't take yourself so seriously, right. life is, you know, you can enjoy right. life a little more. That's right. Um, I want to, I want to kick off really, um, not talking about being crippled. <laughs> 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 I want to uh, kick off really um, talking about you. Okay. Um, where did you come from? Um, where did you come from? How did you grow up? Tell us, t- tell us some some stuff about you that we may need to know in order to have some really cool conversation. Okay. Well, um, I was actually born in Washington, D.C. Uh, when I was about five, we moved away. My mother got married, and uh, my stepfather at the time moved us to Cleveland. So okay. I was actually raised in Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. Um, of course, their marriage was short-lived, real short-lived. Okay. And uh, so my mother, she raised... Um, uh, five boys, five of us she raised by herself mm. uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. You know, we did live in the uh, the hood, <laughs> okay? But, you know, it's crazy because I had fun. Right. You know, I had fun in the hood. You know, we didn't have everything, and my mother rarely worked. You know, we were, we were always on public assistance, but we, we always ate. You know, there was always a meal on the table. We always had a place to live. She took care of us, and, right. and, and she worked hard, and I admired my mother. And my mother, was a, she was a disciplinarian, too, so, you know, we got that fist. Right. And the belt, and the Hot Wheel track, <laughs> extension cord, <laughs> our own switch, you know, all, all those particular things Off we the got. tree. And she had to, because we was boys, so, right. you know, she raised us in the church. You know, we had to go to church. There was no options. Right. Uh, we was in church every Sunday, Sunday evening service, sometimes two and three times during the week. We was in church. <laughs> you know, my boys was outside playing. I'm walking to church with a Bible in my hand. Right. You know, so imagine being there at like 11 and 12 years old, you know. Right. But um, I admire her for that to this day because I believe that's why um, I'm the man I am now because of her discipline mm-hmm. as it relates to, you know, God and church. She instilled it in us. And um, so I'm there. So my mother moves back to D.C. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I wound up going to Kent State University. Uh, when she had moved, she had moved. I was in Kent State University. Then I wound up going back to Cleveland, got involved in gangs. Mm. Um, my church don't believe I was a thug because the Lord cleaned me up. <laughs> 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 but I was in gangs. I was doing those things I wasn't supposed to do. And at the same time, I was in church playing the drums Right. when I was out in the street. Right. So... I wound up moving from Cleveland because I was singing with this group. We were, we were R&B group, and yet I'm in the church too. So I started to get convicted when the R&B group got really serious. When somebody approaches and said, I want to produce you guys. I want to put a CD out. Y'all got the potential to blow up because we used to sing on the street corner. That's how tough we was. 
And I got convicted. And I was like, I can't do this. I can't mm. go deep into this. Mm. And I told them, I went and talked to them. I said, I can't do this. To this day, they still blame me for not being rich, I guess. So <laughs> for dismantling of the group. Right. <laughs> so I told them, you know, I, I couldn't do it, you know. And I wound up moving to Cleveland. Right. I wound up moving to Akron, Ohio to get out of the lifestyle. Moved to Akron, Ohio with one of my boys. I was there for like maybe a year. And what brought me to back to D.C. was a female, man. Mm. She broke my heart in Akron. She broke my heart. <laughs> she got me right And here. you left the whole state? I left the state. <laughs> I left it all. I get it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was God, you know what I'm saying? But um, my mother sent me a ticket, and I wound back up in D.C. Um, I didn't like it here. I felt that everybody looked alike, dressed alike, right. talked alike. When I got here, they were like saying stuff like, hey, sure, they can holler at you. Everybody was saying it. Everybody had on Tim's. <laughs> in, the, in the summertime, I couldn't understand it. <laughs> could wrap my head around it. That's you crazy. Know. You're from here. You don't understand it. I didn't understand it. We had know. Tim's and shorts and drop right. socks to our knees. Right. And it just, it didn't click. So <laughs> I wanted to go back, but the Lord was like, you're not going away because I got purpose for you here. Mm. This was your destiny the whole time. Mm. And so I... um you know, started working, different things like that. Got my own place at one time. You know, going through the process of uh, getting myself closer to God. Mm -hmm. You know, I got in the church where my mother was. I was there for 20 years, um, growing the foundation of what he put in me. And um, it was it was there at the church where I learned how to... Um, I played the drums for a little while, but I was also like a choir director, mm -hmm. sang on the praise team. I was president of the young people on the local level, then on the kind of district level mm -hmm. for the district we, district that we were in. So I began to grow ministry skills. Mm -hmm. You know, I was with the brotherhood uh, at one time, and you know, learning the structure of church and those particular things, uh, learning about spiritual warfare in the church, mm -hmm. experiencing it for the first time where I was because the church was located right across from St. Elizabeth. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so when sometimes they begin to come in and we begin to experience it, mm. you know. And mm. so I, I learned a lot. I found the foundational stuff there until the Lord basically told me, you know, it was time for you to leave because I'm elevating you to a different place. Mm. And you have to move from this spot because they're not going to be able to take you the other place I need to take you there. Mm. So I got to move you out of this place of, um, to move you to another place to open up your eyes some more about mm. some things. All right. You know, cause you can be in a place for 20 years and you could be blind. Right. <laughs> right. And God was like, you kind of blind to some things mm. and I need to open you up some more. So I need to pull you out of a traditional place mm -hmm. to bring you in a non-traditional place. Because the people that I'm going to send in your ministry are not going to be traditional. Mm -hmm. And you won't be able to minister to them if you have a judgmental type of spirit, right. judgmental type of mind. You can't minister to them because you're going to look at them one way. Right. So he had to elevate me by moving me and put me in a place where I wasn't comfortable. Mm. You know. And um, it was there at this place I was for six years. And I thank God for that pastor because... He taught me how to pastor. Mm. I learned under him, and he taught me how to um, look at people for who they are, mm -hmm. you know, and to understand that people are people. Mm -hmm. not, they're not aliens. <laughs> right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> not aliens, not robots. Absolutely. You know, and so it was there I kind of learned the personality of people. Right. Because the two biggest things that we struggle with in church and if you if you got a hold of these things, they will be, you you will become successful in church, is personalities and principalities mm -hmm. as people and spirits. Mm -hmm. When you understand those two things, you can flow in church and you can flow in your purpose. Mm. But a lot of people get so frustrated in ministry because of people and right. you can't because of the personality. Yes, you know. So so before I ask you my next question. Mm -hmm. Tell me how True Fam came to be. Like when you know, I know how how old are you? Like seven, eight, how seven old? years old. Seven, yeah, seven. So how, where where did the vision for True Fam come 
Uh, True Fam is the name of his church, by the way. <laughs> um, when when did that vision come? You know, come, you know, come to you, and how did how did the whole how did the whole thing come to be? With with the church started in 2013, and when I was in a place just before I left the church, I was there for 20 years. The Lord started speaking to me about pastoring. Of course, like most people, I'm like, nah, that ain't me. Right. I'm not doing that. That's craziness. <laughs> like I was saying stuff like I bind you. <laughs> Pretty much whenever the Lord say something, like, this is where I want you to go. And you're like, mm. right. Mm. So the six years that I was at the other church prepared me for pastoring. And when I got right. that, I told the pastor that, that God called me to do this. And he said, okay. And so he helped me prepare for that. But um, he helped me to prepare to a certain extent because you never really prepared until you get into it. Mm. You know, it's just like marriage. Mm-hmm. You know, you can go through all the sessions you want to, but until you get in it, right. you know, you got to experience it. And so I um, started the church in 2013, and I knew that um, because of where he had placed me, how I wanted, I guess the vision of how the ministry should flow. Right. You know, I knew that I wanted a progressive ministry. Right. Um a ministry where when, when people come in, their gifts can be expressed. They can be used where there is no favoritism, mm-hmm. you know. And I tell my church all the time, we're an equal opportunity church. Right. If you come in here with a gift, it's going to be used. Right. If you preach, you're going to preach. Right. You know. So, you know, okay, so that's that's good because this is what I wanted to ask you about your church. Um, a lot of, uh, there are a lot of people in the you know in ministry or in church who are struggling with young people mm-hmm. right um they can't get young people in they it's always you know a pizza party a gimmick um you know a song and dance you know you know do this kind of music and that'll bring them in blah blah, blah. what what i know about true fam is you do not struggle there um whatsoever um the majority of the churches you know, the, your, your average age has couldn't be any older than thirty. Um, if if that, <laughs> you know, so, right? Um, and, uh, and and so one thing I, I can I, I I see and I appreciate is that you can you know you have just this core, just you know these young people without without a gimmick, um, and you know it's 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 crazy because it's like yeah, young people you know. Young people like to be in the presence of God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. if it's there. Um, did you ha- did you know that's where you were going um, when you when you started? Did you know that's how it, how it would how it would pan out? I, I knew that was a strong suit of ministry because I work with the young people not just on a local level but on a national level. Right. I would for a national convention. I would put together basketball tournaments and different things like this. So I built a bond with the young people. Um, I have four daughters, right? <laughs> you know, which taught me patience. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> um, so the thing with um, with the young people has been there, but it has evolved mm. as I've grown in ministry. And I think part of it is is that I I listen to them mm-hmm. because they have a voice. Mm-hmm. So the first thing I do is listen to what they have to say. And I think a lot of times, a lot of churches. It's almost like sit over there in the corner. You don't need to be heard. You're right, not old right, enough. You don't have anything to say. Right. You know, and I have a little guy in our church, and he's just brilliant. He just, the pastor, pastoring is in him. I think he's about maybe nine, ten years old. <laughs> and he, um, but I listen to him. When he speaks, I listen to him. He just prayed for you Sunday. And when he's in our starting point class, He's asked, raising hands and he's asking questions and right. he's answering questions. Wow. And so taking the time to listen to him is important. And that way, the young people feel that you're really invested in them, that mm-hmm. you're interested in them, that they have a voice and that you care about them. Mm-hmm. And that's the key in ministry um, is that I care about our young people. I love them. Right. You know, I mean, I really do. And some of them, uh, they're literally like sons and daughters right. to me. Right. You know, and so we have this type of relationship. And what I love about them is even though we have this type of relationship, they still respect me as bishop. Right. You know, and so 
when they text me, hey, I got to answer about the Bible. I say, if I can get back to them, I say, I'm going to get back to you. Give me five minutes. And I'll call them and I'll talk to them. Right. If I need, if they, they sometimes I've gotten calls where they say, hey, Bishop, my friend is, they, they, they want to take their life. I need mm. you to talk to them. Mm. Okay, give me the number. Put them on the phone. Let's deal with it right now. Mm. Come on. You know, those particular things, because they know that I'm going to be there for them, not just for them, but for their friends that they're trying to bring, mm -hmm. trying to bring to Christ, mm -hmm. you know. So it's knowing that that the person, you know, the person cares. Right. And a lot of churches nowadays are just like, they don't want to be bothered right. with uh, the young generation. Right. You know, just sit them in the corner. Just sit over there and be quiet. Right. You know. Yeah, it's the, they're looking at the numbers or they're looking at the, you know. Exactly. I, you know, one thing that, that interests me about the way that you, the, you're, you're, the, the way you do church is just different. Um, one thing that interests me, um, and it, I can think it interests me to understand how, how it feels. Um, you invest a lot into people into ministry, into people, and, and you know, and you know, a person can walk in your church and having no idea what the Lord is calling them to do, period, right? And you can see it in them. You can pull it out of them. You can, you'll platform them, and, you know, you'll start pushing them in ministry, pushing them, pushing them, because you see their potential. That when the person begins to see it for themselves, that often causes people to go a different direction. Um, so I wonder when you know that is your calling and you know that that happens, do you just, is it just a, well, <laughs> see ya? Or, you know, it, it, it kind of, it makes me wonder how it feels when that had, it has to have happened a, a, a gazillion times. Was it you put, were you, were you, were you you know, where you bring something out of people and then they're gone. And, right. you know, I, I wonder how that, how that feels. Well, I think the first person that ever left my church, it broke me. Because mm. <laughs> it was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you said you'd be with me forever. You know, and it, it, it crushed me. I think, you know, as a pastor, I was hurt. You know, deep cried a little bit, a couple of tears, like Denzel Washington. Right. <laughs> and um, you know, it it was my first experience. And so a bishop, uh, I sat next to him on the pulpit one day. Can I say his I, it's like it's okay if I can say his name, right? As, as long as it's okay with you, it's okay. okay. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Yeah. As, as You're as, not gonna get me <laughs> in trouble. I don't want to. <laughs> bishop Bishop Pitts, I was sitting next to him on the pulpit, and he said Man, the church is a bus. People get on and people get off. And sometimes they don't ask for a transfer. And when he said it to me, even though it was simplistic, mm. it was a revelation for me mm. that this is a part of life. I cannot allow for somebody to come in. I see the potential in them. Mm -hmm. Even when they don't, I pour into them, mm -hmm. pour into them. They take, 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 and then they get up. And they leave. I cannot allow that to make me bitter. Mm. I cannot allow it to hurt me. Mm -hmm. You know, because if it did, then I would I would have this wall up when it comes to anybody coming into my ministry. Right. You know, I've just had one, two, three, four people coming to the church who are in the ministry, mm -hmm. who are coming in the ministry, and um, I have to pour into them. I have to pull out of them. And I have to give them a platform so that their gift can grow, mm -hmm. you know. And if the Lord tells them one day, hey, it's time for you to exit and go another route, right. you know, that's on God, mm -hmm. you know. But I can't allow it to make me bitter. So one, one thing is this. I'm glad you asked me this question. <laughs> um, there are a lot of cults out here. Yes. There are a lot of controlling pastors, yep. manipulative who who feel like they own you. Right. The church is not a plantation. Mm. You know, it's we don't we don't own God's people. Mm -hmm. Um I'm 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 the shepherd for the sheep that the of the flock that he's given me. And that's all who I am. 
you know, but they belong to God. So um, I'm never possessive when it comes to God, people. Mm -hmm. So if this is what the Lord is doing with them, this is what he's doing with them. If I have to be instrumental in their life and help uh, catapulting them to the next level, then God sent them to me to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, can I just go a little deeper? You can things? go as deep as deep you as want. As I want to. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, I'm that, here for it. There are occasions when, you know, <laughs> let me let me put it plain. I there are times when I I pray people out of the church. <laughs> And, <laughs> and I'm sorry, that's not supposed to be fun. <laughs> and it's because of the, it's because of the like the scripture that you read, you know, about sowing discord mm -hmm. in the ministry. And biblically, you have the right to dismiss them when they're doing that. Right, you're trying to divide the flock. Right, you know, you you come in there with a Jezebel type spirit. A spirit of witchcraft, mm. you know, and you're trying to divide, control, and conquer. God put one leader in over the church, mm. that pastors. <laughs> He's that's his job. Mm. So it's not your job to come in and try to manipulate or anything like that. And so um I have had literally, you know, prayed people out who I felt like were trying to hurt the ministry. Mm. You know, and they may have thought that they left on their own accord, but I was, I'm, 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 the prayers <laughs> of the righteous are valid. <laughs> and God not going to have his, have his house damaged. Right. You know, when there are people in there doing right. And it's my job to protect the people in the house. You right. Know? So, um, that's a loaded question. I know. But you know, it's one of those, it's one of those questions. For me, it's like very, most places you go as far as church, there is a process um, where you know, you're at the church 20 years before you really are able to do anything in ministry or blah, blah, blah. You can, you know, and, and, and it's in, in one right that's, in one right it's understandable, right. you know, whereas mm -hmm. there is that process of you can sweep the church before you can get on this microphone, mm -hmm. understandable. Um, but in another right, it's, it's, it's you know, a, a hierarchy, right? And so... But in, in, in your place, you, it's like you it's like you see people and you're like, mm, I see that gift in you. We're going to pull that out of you. Mm -hmm. And when people can't even see it in of themselves, right. you know what I'm saying? And I think that's, you know, one, I think that's one of the reasons why you have so many young people, right? You know, you have people with, you know, you, people come in, can come in and have absolutely no direction in their lives, in their lives and just have absolutely no, no you know, thought of, you know, what my purpose is, what my calling is. You know, a lot of young people are like that and they get into that and you can, you, and you begin pulling it out of them. So I, you know, a lot of times it's like, sometimes I'm, I'm interested to know how something feels, you know, when, you know, obviously, you know, it's a process, you know, it's going to happen, mm -hmm. but you know, right. but how does that, how does it feel? You know, another thing I want to talk to you about, um, which hopefully, it, you know, it may be just as deep, but a lot of people, um, pop from church to church to church um, and I find a lot of people talk about or, or they say I don't go to church because there's a lot of church hurt mm -hmm. um, how do you how do you how does one handle the that type of um, you know when people come into the church and they you know they or they leave feeling hurt or come having been hurt you know like Church hurt is like a huge thing, and my and, and so just to give you my opinion, a lot of time it's an excuse to bop around because the church, you know. But how do you, but, but how do you deal? How does one deal with with the church? Like you know, the person that comes in is like you know, church hurt or leaves. Okay, yeah, because you're right. That church hurt thing is huge. Um, when I started the ministry, because I've been church hurt. Right. I guess if you want to call it church hurt. I've been job hurt too. <laughs> and subway riding hurt. And right. <laughs> <laughs> restaurant hurt. I've right. been hurt a lot of places. Right. But um when I first started church, our model is a church where true love reaches beyond the walls. Right. And that was my model because I wanted our ministry to really, really love people for real. And not just say it because you want members. 
mm. or you want the numbers. No, I want this church to be instilled really on love. So you can come in. I don't care if you smell like weed. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you smell like alcohol. I just want you in the church. Get in here so that we can work with you, you know. So what happens is this. It's a good question, Sean. I hate the term church hurt. Why do people get hurt in church? People get hurt in church because people are people. Mm. And outside of church, they're still people. So people have a tendency to hurt people, period. Mm. There are people on my job who come for me sometimes. Right. You know, so, but I don't cry about job hurt. I don't leave my job. Right. <laughs> for it. I still go to work. Right. You know, I have a job to do because I know my purpose. Right. And that person, I'm not going to give you the power to make me leave my position mm. because of your jealousy or of your envious. So I'm not giving you that. Church hurt. And people do get hurt in church. Let me put it that way, because some people will get offended even by what I'm saying. Um, is to me a lot. Of, I'm gonna say ninety percent of the time is an excuse mm. to become a spiritual bunny rabbit mm. and hop from church to church. Uh -huh. You know, I heard I a don't like this spiritual bunny, bunny rabbit. rabbit. Right. So you don't like the carrots over here. So you go someplace <laughs> else. You don't like the person that's feeding you the carrots. Mm. You go someplace else. It's excuses. Anytime you find somebody who has been in multiple ministries, like the back to back to back to back, something's wrong. And they would always say, um, well, let me put it like this. Um, good preacher of mine, friend of mine, um, Pastor Dallas, said, I never seen a tree running. Mm. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so you got to be planted. You mm -hmm. know, you keep unrooting a plant out of a pot, what's right. going to happen? It's never going to grow. It's never going to take root. It's going right. to die. And so a lot of times people with church hurt, and this is what I found out, a lot of people that have church hurt, they are chronic complainers. Mm -hmm. They're perfectionists. They want everything to go their way. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't go that way, they get angry. You know, that's what I found out about a lot of church hurt. They also don't like discipline. Mm. So they operate in the spirit of offense. And the spirit of offense is huge now. Mm. It is big. Nobody wants anybody saying anything to them in church. They don't want you disciplining them because some of this church hurt is actually discipline. Mm -hmm. You know, your pastor come talk to you and say, hey, you know, you, you shouldn't have done that. You have to be careful when you're such and such. And you automatically get offended by it. You don't tell me what to do. He put his pants on just like I put my pants on. And you get this offense thing. Mm -hmm. You're not teachable. You can't grow like that. Mm -hmm. You know? Do we get hurt in church? Yes. But you shouldn't get hurt to the point where you constantly leave in churches, leaving churches. One person hurt you in the church and you gone. Mm. That one person got all that power? Mm. <laughs> no, nah, you you gotta you have you gotta be stronger than that. I, there are babes that come into the church. Right. Okay? There are babies that come into the church. Our job as saints is to protect our babies. Right. Everybody in the church is not perfect. Nobody in the, the church devil church. comes to yeah yeah <laughs> nobody is right and so the devil come to church too, you know and uh, some people they haven't grown in certain areas. I don't care if you've been in church for twenty years, you still you you still nasty, your mouth still foul, you still don't know how to talk to people, you still got an anger issue. If you've been in church for twenty years and you're in church and you're around people who are just coming to church and sometimes they see that. Or you bleed on them. Mm, mm. And then they like, I can't, I, I had this in the world. I don't want to come into church to do this. Right. And the reason why the standard is so high in the church, because we expect Christians not to act like that. You're supposed to act like Christ mm -hmm. when we still people. Right. <laughs> so we still got issues. Right. And pastors got issues. Leadership got issues. You know? So, um, we got to learn to be stable in church. Somebody hurt you. The Bible gives instructions for it. If you think your brother has an art against you, go to them. Talk about it. Get it right. Right. You know, forgiveness is another thing that's on the table that the church is lacking. Mm. We don't forgive like we should. So we walk around two and three years mad at somebody because you didn't bring balloons to my party. Right. You know, crazy is we, we, <laughs> we don't forgive each other. Yes. That's right. interesting because we can forgive people outside of the church with no problem. Um, but, the, 
for you know, so we can accept you know a sinner's, you know, but for us to, to each other, it's, it's really hard to forgive our family, yeah. which is interesting, you know. But but it happens like that even in our families, yes, you know. Exactly. You know, walk around for, you know, six years having I ain't never talked I ain't talked to my brother in six years, right. you know, you know right. having offense because you know. But um, I'll never forget a friend of mine. Like I I I, I don't remember the last time I was this angry. A, a friend of mine passed away. And um, I called a mutual friend that, um, you know, to let him know that that um, he passed away or whatever. And he, I mean, the mutual friend was like, nah, because you know back, because he was, you know, back in the day he did. And I'm like, yo, are you are you kidding me? <laughs> it's like, are you, are you, never mind. And, and you know, you, you, you I, don't, I don't remember the last time I was that angry. Like, I'm calling right, you to tell right. you about this and you can't get over, over. what happened you know, eight years ago or whatever. It's like this. It's and and I I see a lot of that in where we are. Yes. Like you know, it's, it's a lot of that. In, you know, just like you said, just really really sensitive people. Let me um, let, let me tell you what happened to me. Uh, this is the first time this ever happened to me, blatant, like in my face. Right. So I'm at a ministry, and the guy comes up to me and he says, "I hate you." Mm. Right. Now, you, anybody knows me, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> So he says, I hate you, right? So I'm like, I said, I'm sorry. I said, but I love you. I said, did I do something to offend you or did I? He said, no, you ain't do nothing to offend me. I just don't like you. I said, man, I said, I'm so sorry. I said, but I love you. I said, if anything I can do to help this process, you know, just let me know, you know, mm -hmm. so we can get it together. Because my whole focus was, my challenge was getting him to see that I'm a good person. Um, and not allowing the enemy to do that because I knew it was the enemy, mm -hmm. and I knew why it was happening. It was happening be just because of I came into a church and I started functioning in the area that you were supposed to have been functioning in, mm -hmm. and you weren't. Mm -hmm. So when I came in, I started functioning there, and that's where the jealousy and the anger came in. Mm -hmm. But I I didn't allow that to push me out to church. Right. Uh, uh, no, my my mindset was, I'm gonna conquer this. I'm a, before I leave out of this place, I'm gonna get him to love me. Mm. That was my mindset, and so even in true fam, when we have hard cases come in, my mm. challenge is, how do I get this person to come out of their shell? Mm -hmm. How do I get them not to be an introvert? Mm. How do I get them to stop being so mean and angry? Mm. I have to invest in them. Right. I got to talk to them. I got to sit down with them. I may have to go to dinner with them right. to talk with them, to, to hear their story. They could have been hurt. Uh, anything could have happened. Right. I got to find out why you are the way you are. Why you um, why you smoke weed. Right. <laughs> why do you smoke cigarettes? <laughs> why are you, why, why you drinking like you're drinking? I, right. I, 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 want, I want to talk to you so that I can try to help you through this process. I'm not going to judge you. Just let me help you through it if you want to be delivered. That's my that's my mindset. And that approach, with that approach, I'm not hurting them. Right. I'm sowing into them. Mm. So then watch this. The reason why people get hurt in church is because of this. The Bible says, um, ye that are spiritual, restore. Mm -hmm. Right? The part that we missed is that there's too many people trying to restore people that are not spiritual. Mm. So you don't know what to say out of your mouth. Mm. And you do more damage. You're not developing them. You're damaging them because you're not spiritual. Mm. When you're spiritual. Okay, let's do this again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. So in the midst of talking about church hurt, um, we got interrupted in a way that my podcast never does. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. I'm sorry. That was um very, very interesting. Uh <laughs> don't ask me, I don't know. Um I'm sorry everyone that uh the podcast just stopped it abruptly. Our whole you know, we we're we're all you know, we're all into it. And uh look at that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny is when you what's up with it when it's like when it um we, you know when you get like a, a a break or whatever, it then like kind of mess up your flow. Mm -hmm. I think that was the point of what the enemy mm -hmm. tried to do there is yeah. mess up your flow. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, we were talking about church hurt, mm-hmm. um, and it was a very that definitely a very deep subject. Um, very very deep subject because you know when you. I look on, you know, I'm always looking up and down my timeline. Like, I, you know, like it's it's the interesting to because I can take it all. Like a lot of people can't go mm-hmm. through it and, right. and like look up and down their timeline because they can't take what's on the inside of people's heads. But for me, like I can like I can take it. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I can take it. Like because I, I a lot of I, I want to know where people are at. Like like where right. where are people at? Because people right. ask questions like you know why don't why you know why don't people come to church? And it's like you don't really have to ask that question if you just look. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I, I found that a lot of people will you know what they're talking about. You know I've been hurt in church and and it's like you know so it's it's interesting just to hear your approach. You know just to hear your thoughts on it. To hear your approach on it, I, you know. Another question: What's the blueprint for you? Like, what if, if if a person's trying to start? Like, what's the what? You know, somebody says, "Man, I wanna, I want a church that is, you know, full of young people and that we invest in people." What's what's the blueprint? Like, what what would you what you know what would you give someone trying to you know start their own ministry, and um, you know you know for millennials? You gotta um, first of all, you have to you have to understand them. Mm-hmm. Um, understand that this millennial generation, um, and you got to be willing to take them in all of their, um, all of their differences. Yeah, you know, you 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 have to embrace them. I didn't say embrace their sin. Right. I said you have to take them in their, you know, as who they are. Right. You know, uh, somebody, a couple of people was quite a few, uh, spoke a prophetic word to me, uh, quite a few times about. You know, those coming in our ministry with piercings and tattoos and different mm. things like that. You know, and I do receive anybody into the church. Right. But I also educate them. Right. On what they're doing or why they've done what they've done. Right. You know, so that they have a full understanding. So we're living in a why generation. Right. Absolutely. And everybody wants to know why. So gone are the days of just do like I told you. Right. Or just do it to be doing it. Even when it comes to biblical things. That's not in the Bible. That's a man-made rule that you just made up. So right. where's it, it, it? Don't worry about it. You just <laughs> <laughs> we're not. You can't do that anymore. Right. You know. So now people, you know, want they want to know where is it that this is in the Bible? Where is it? Right. You know. Explain that to me. And to give an example, my brother years ago when I was in Cleveland asked my um, my pastor at the time where the dinosaurs come from. He said, I know they're real because um, they're dinosaur bones. So why doesn't the Bible talk about dinosaurs? Mm. And my pastor told him, don't worry about it. Just stay saved. (laughs) And so so what people don't understand is that if you don't address those questions, you don't address those questions, then the person will have a hard time believing in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe in the Bible, then you don't believe in God or Jesus if you don't believe in his word. You know, so... Those things right there, um, you got you have to. If you're going to get millennials, you have to understand them. Mm-hmm. And we've had people come into the church who were just about ninety percent atheists. Mm-hmm. You know, um, different religions used to be Muslims or right. whatever. I had to study those to understand how to reach them. Wow. I I, I realized that I couldn't use the Bible to bring an atheist to Christ, I had to use science, mm-hmm. basically, to show him that God is real. Right. Because he don't believe in the Bible. <laughs> you know? But most pastors today, they're not going to that extent. They don't care about that. I had to extensively study spiritual warfare and witchcraft um, to understand that some of the things that our youth are doing that are the style or even the fashion. Right. No, that's your your those those are demonic rituals that you're doing. You just don't know because everybody else doing it. Right. You know nowadays they're doing everything. They're burning sage. They don't know where it's coming. They're doing it because everybody else is doing it. Right. You know they believe in the stuff like reincarnation. Sage things. That's all. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so they doing it, but they don't they don't they don't know why they're doing it. Right. You know. So it's educating the millennials. Um. On that level, if you want to build that ministry and you want the millennials to come in, mm-hmm. you got to talk to them. Right. You got you you got to feed their minds. You know, 
Sunday morning is for preaching. It's for preaching. You can get prophetic word. You can lay hands on altar, all the type of stuff. But one element that's missing out of the church, Sean, is teaching. Mm-hmm. I just started a youth Bible study. Mm -hmm. Every fourth Thursday is our youth Bible study where just the youth come out. And we just sit and we talk about anything. Mm -hmm. Dating, sex, spiritual warfare, the Bible, whatever it is. So they have an open platform where they can just talk about anything. Right. And I had a brack of youth in there Mm. because they wanted to talk. They wanted to understand their gifts. They wanted wanted to know why I was experiencing something spiritually. Mm. You know? And so I was able to talk to them. So, and they can get that knowledge and continue to grow, mm. you know? So if you're not doing that as a ministry, you're going to, you're going to kill your ministry. Mm-hmm. If you, if you're not talking to the young people, if you're not, because millennials, they don't want to go to church these days. Right. And this is the other crazy part. Sunday, we were in church from 12 to four. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, the power of God fell. Right. The altar call was, I didn't preach. Right. My, uh, had one of the young people, she started off preaching. Then they had a youth panel. Mm. They had three young ladies on the youth panel talking about depression. Mm. So effective. Uh. Because there were people in there who were dealing with it and they needed to hear that. Right. Absolutely. It was effective. I had one of the young people tell me that youth panel really helped me. Right. And then our youth pastor spoke. And because we have the freedom, I give them the freedom to operate in their gifts. He preached, he, he prophesied, he went forth and the altar was full and it is what it is. And so we didn't get out at four o'clock, but nobody left. Right. Because they were hungry. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. And I know today is it's not popular to have church that long. We don't always have it that long. Right. Sometimes we go to three. <laughs> But it's, I know it's not popular, but this is key right here. The reason why there's a big decline in the church. In 1998, 70% of America was in church. Right. 2018, 50% of people are in church now. Right. There's a decline. Why is it such a big decline? Glad you asked me. It's because the people are not seeing signs and miracles and wonders in the church. Mm. They're not seeing the manifestation of the power of God happen in the church. Mm. They're just seeing people going to church shouting. Right. They just saying them speaking in tongues. Right. They just saying all those things, but they're not seeing people get up out of wheelchairs. The blinded eyes open. The things that, ha- and I'm talking about in America, mm-hmm. because we got so much stuff. Mm-hmm. We so bogged down with stuff. Right. We don't have time to pray and really see God like we should. And so there's been a decline in church because they don't see results. And that's how the millennials are. Why mm-hmm. should I go to church when they're going to be doing this, the same thing? There's no difference. I, I don't even feel anything when I go in there. Right. I don't, you know, I, you know, now that you can go into a church and, and you can hear a 15-minute word, you're not convicted. You're, it's, nothing's pulling on your spirit. Nothing's pulling on your soul cause, because the church was set up as a program. Get right. you in and get you out. It's like a cookie cutter. Right. Get you in, get you out. Okay, next. Right. You can't do that. That's crazy. You know. You know. When I, I, you know, I say, you know, what's the blueprint? How do you keep the young people in? You know, and 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 there's so many times that you see people that say they'll say something like, you know, some gimmick. Yeah. And it's like, and it's like, man, it's like uh, the millennials don't not, not even millennials, the millennials is is is, it's um you know generation wise and they just don't. You know the gimmicks do not don't work anymore. They can see through it. Right, it doesn't work anymore. It's not pizza parties. It's not. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not as as much as I you know as much as I love hip hop Christian hip hop music. It's not necessarily the music. Um, it's it's an experience now. And it's, and I think that you know like what you said is like perfect going, like. If you're missing the experience, you're going to miss them. You're going to miss him. There it is. Yeah. Put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that was powerful. Um, okay. I'm going to ask you one more thing. Okay. We've got two more things to do. First thing. If there was something in the world, if, you had, if, if the Lord gave you the grace to change one thing, and that's to go, that's to go for the world. Let's go for the country. If he gave you the grace and said, I, I'll give you the grace, you can change one thing in the whole country. That's all you can do, one thing. 
what do you what what would be your what would be your idea of what you would do? What, you know, like what would be the foremost thing that you would do? I can change one thing to make the world a better place. I got the grace to change one play one thing. Wow. Wow. I ain't gonna be deep because some people are like, well, everybody need to be saved. You know, that's everybody's decision. Um, right. <laughs> yeah, we got free will on that. Um, what I think what bothers me the most, especially here in this country, is homelessness. Mm. It is it's unbelievable um, to see people out in the streets, just freezing out in the streets, mm. sleeping in garbage cans, looking for food, all of that. All those type of things, you know, um, and you try to do the, you try to do outreach as a church sometimes, but you just a church, mm-hmm. you know. You can't. There's some things, some factors that you can't change, and right. you can't save everybody, you know. So, but homelessness bothers me, and I would love. And I've seen some other countries putting some things in play, mm-hmm. and I'm like, why can't we do that here? I saw T.D. Jakes say once, he said the exact same thing, but I, he put it in perspective one time, and um, you know, he said if if every church gave every bit of all of their money that they had, and because I, I think everybody turns to the church, like the church is supposed to be doing right. something, you know, if the church gave every bit of tithe, every bit of offering that they have, um, they'd solve about 12% of homelessness, and there would be no church. <laughs> you know, because there'd be no church, there'd be no staff, there'd be no, there'd be no church, you know, and so I, that's a, you know, that's one of the things that that, that I've watched. You know, like I said, I watched TVJ talks about, you know, as passionate as you were just were, um, talk about homelessness in the same, um, in the same vein. Um, okay, um, one more thing. So every time I do this show. Um, until this, every Uh-oh. time I do the show, <laughs> hold up. Here on the Elevation Podcast, um, so we give gifts. Okay. Wow. <laughs> it's okay that you didn't give me anything. I'm, I'm <laughs> Told me, man. You came, you came wow. with crutches. Yeah, um, <laughs> take one of my crutches. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, all right. So we give gifts here. But, you know, I, I, I give gifts to say thank you for coming. Um, thank you for, uh, you know, crawling up the steps. Um, Literally. Um, to get here. and <laughs> Literally crawled up. <laughs> and, um, you know, and that's just just what I do. So yeah, there you go. You gotta open it for everybody. I, I gotta open it for yeah, everybody. Because okay. everybody, everybody's looking. It's crazy because my birthday is coming up. Too. Yes. What day is? Is it the eighth? It's not the eighth. My is birthday it? is actually February fifth. The fifth. I will be fifty-five years old. Fifty-five. Wow. Wow, bro. <laughs> Whoa, man. This, this is my favorite item. Though. This is hot. To my wife and kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to go straight hood. You bet not. <laughs> this this is nice, Sean. Man. Reach clothing. Man, this is nice. Thank you, sir. No problem. Appreciate this, man. No problem. Thank you, man. Um, I'm sorry about that little hiccup here on the on the. Um, I'm gonna fix that, <laughs> man. But I thank you a lot for for coming out um, and 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 doing this, and um, I appreciate all of the words that you said. I knew it was gonna be a good conversation because um, just because like I had all these things. Ooh, I can ask him about this. Ooh, ask him about this. <laughs> and it was just all the light that had all these things in my head. But um, I thank you a lot for. Um, for just you know being a part and coming out and everything and, and hopefully you you know you well you know definitely get your wife one yes <laughs> for women's empowerment month 
All right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. This is the Elevation Podcast. My name is Sean Riffraff. You've been here. We've been talking to Bishop Eric Zimmerman this hour. Um, this is www.seanriffraff.com. Definitely check the podcast out tomorrow on um, Apple Podcasts or Spotify or whatever. And um, that whole little break thing won't be there anymore. Um, <laughs> Oh, I laugh at my pain. Thank y'all very much. Talk to y'all later. Peace.